So the word I want to bring to you is that there is no escape for the enemy. Before I talk about that, I want to talk about the number three. The number three in Hebrew or Jewish terminology or in their thinking means completion. That's why when Jesus rose from the dead, it was on the third day. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so, there are three institutions that God has set up. Three institutions. The first institution that God set up is the home and family. That's the first institution. Because in Genesis 2 verse 24, it says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be two flesh, three flesh, four flesh, one flesh. And so it's one. And then Jesus picks it up in Matthew chapter 19, verse 4 to 6. And Jesus said, and he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them, that's God, at the beginning made them male and female? And he said, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. And the twain, means the two, shall be one flesh. Hallelujah. And then Jesus went on to say, Wherefore there are no more two twain, but one flesh. And he goes on to say, What therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. That word joined together is the original Greek word suzugnami. It means only God can do it. Only God can do it. Amen? So if God has done it, let no man put it asunder. Amen? And then, do you know what's exciting? Then Paul picks up the same thing from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31 and 32. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 31 and 32. He says, for this cause... Shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh. Now look what Paul adds to it. Verse 32 says, this is a great mystery. Mysterious it is in Greek. This mystery means it was hidden but now revealed. So this is now a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Oh, I feel like I want to preach right now. Hallelujah. If you never knew this before, Christ and the church are one. So if you're touching the church, you're touching Christ. I want some hallelujahs here. Come on, preach. Are you hearing me? Because they are one. Who is the church? You see, we've got this mentality that the church is the brick wall and the mortar and the wood. Well, I've got news for you. It's not the church. If me and my sister Olive decide to stand in the street and we're talking about Jesus, where two or three are gathered, come on church, Jesus says I'm in the midst. Come on, shout amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So therefore, the first institution that God set up, say God set up, not man, God, was the home and the family. Now, let me just say this. Of course, certain things go wrong in families, isn't it? People separate. People speak against one another. And I'm not going to stand here and say I'm holier than thou. I've been married for over 30 years. But if it wasn't for the grace of God, there go me and Pastor Debbie. 
So therefore, if anybody find themselves in that situation, I am not having a go at you. I'm just saying that we will pray for you. Is that okay? Amen? Because things happen. Things happen. Life happens. And God, he understands that we live in a fallen world. Hallelujah. So the first institution is the home. I want to keep number three in mind. It means completion. The second institution that God set up, say God set up, was government. We know that there's an election coming soon. Amen. I'm not going to say who's going to vote for Labour or Conservatives or SM or whatever, Green Party, because the pulpit is not the place for politics. The pulpit is the place for church and the word of God. Amen? That doesn't mean we can't address certain things, but of course we can, uh, you know, to bring it in line with the word of God. So therefore, the second institution that God made was the government. And the Bible said... If any man shed blood, that man should be punished. That's what the Bible said. Now, God was the one who set that up. So let me read now Romans chapter 13. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. Now, when it talks about powers here, it's talking about governing powers. Okay, because the last institution is the church. I'm coming to that later. But I'm talking about the governing powers, like, for instance, the government. So if the government says to you, pay your tax, if you don't pay your tax, you're rebellious. No matter if we agree or we disagree. Amen. Because we have to pay our tax. And, and even Jesus... <laughs> Jesus made it clear, render unto Caesar, that is Caesar's, and then render though unto God, which is God's. Amen. So therefore, if the government says to you, you must pay your tax, or you must do certain thing, you better do it, because if you don't do it, you're going to get into trouble. Amen. Amen. And no matter how much you argue, once the government says do it, you must do it. Lord, I give you praise. Hallelujah. I just feel the anointing as I'm preaching, teaching right now. It goes on to say, Romans 13 verse 2, Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. So if you, they tell you to pay your tax, and you don't pay your tax, you are not only resisting the government that he set up, but you're resisting the ordinance of God. Let me just finish verse 2. And they that resisteth shall receive to themselves what? Damnation. Verse 3. For the rulers are not a terror to good works. They don't bother with you doing your good works, but to evil works. Wilt thou then be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For the governing people are ministers as well. The ministers is diakonos, means servants. So they are ministers of God for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword. Say the sword. We're going to come back to the word sword. Amen. He beareth not the sword in vain, for he is a minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Amen? I could read on. It just goes on to say, make sure that you follow what the government says. So the first institution is what? The home and the family. The second institution is government. Who set these up? God. God was the one who brought out the laws from the beginning. And the final institution that God sets up is called the church. The church. And that's why the Bible said, hallelujah, upon this rock I will build my ecclesia, the church, the called out ones. And the gates 
of hell shall not prevail against. Let me just say it very slowly. Jesus is building his church. And no matter what you want, do. <laughs> the gates of hell cannot prevail. So if you fight against the church, as I said, you're fighting against Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Because they are one. And sometimes we forget that the church and Christ are one. And we think we can just say what we want, do what we want behind closed doors, and think we can get away with it. God is seeing. I want to come to that. God is seeing. Because God has revealed certain things to me and pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm, I'm going to go at this church, you know. I'm talking about Christendom. Amen. Hallelujah. So therefore, listen to what Hebrews 13 verse 17 says. I'm hoping everybody's listening to this. Now this now is not the government. This is the church. The elders of the church. Obey them that have rule over you. Pause. Selah. And submit yourself for they watch for your souls as they must give an account that they may do it with joy. Amen. Now listen to this. And not with what? And not with? Why? Why? What does it say that next? For that is unprofitable for you. Oh, are you hearing? Are you hearing? YouTube, you listening? Everybody on YouTube, listen. Obey them that have rule over you in the Lord. Submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls, as they must give an account. Not maybe, but they must. That they may do it with joy. We as leaders want to do it with joy. So it's not grief. Because the minute we feel grief, it's unprofitable for you. This is the word of God. And that's why I love the word of God. What can you do against the truth but the truth? And so, the only time that we are excused from following the government or following the leader of the church is if they are telling you something which is outside of the word of God. So let me give you an example. If I said to you, the Lord just spoke to me. Even if I speak in tongues, even if I jump up and round and say, God says that you can go out and steal the car because God says that you're going to be blessed with it. Even if I said that, you said no. Because the Bible says, thou shalt not steal. Hallelujah. So therefore, our blueprint, our mandate has to be the word of God. You see, church is not a democracy. Oh, I'm going to get myself into trouble now. Am I going to get myself into trouble? Can I preach? Can I teach? The church is a theocracy. So everything must be based on the word of God. But I said to you a few weeks ago, we're going down that road. You're not allowed to say sin is sin anymore. You're not allowed to do it. The other day, I preached on the rainbow, taking back the rainbow, how God put seven colors. Amen? And all the seven colors together as light makes complete white light. So when you see white light, it's all the seven colors together. Did you know that? Hallelujah. So therefore, the LGBT, you've got to be careful because they may turn us off again. When I preached on this, the YouTube turned me off. They turned me off. He said, that's where, and when the church is getting that way, we're getting dangerous. I have to preach what God tells me to preach. I'm in a bishop and I'm the administrator of this church. Amen. And so, I was preaching that the LGBT, they took out the indigo color. And the indigo color 
means devotion to God. Because each color means different things. All seven colors mean different things. But they've changed all those colors to mean what they want it to mean. And I made it clear. I have no problem with anybody's lifestyle. If they want to live that lifestyle, I have no problem. But I have, it's just the sin we can't condone. Can I say that, Pastor? We can't condone the sin. If you agree, say amen. Thank you. That's what I want to hear. Amen. I'm glad you said amen. Because we can't condone sin. In Acts chapter 20, verse 26 onwards, it says, Wherefore, Paul says, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. <laughs> God of mercy. Why? Verse 27. For I have not shunned to declare unto you some of the gospel. It says all of the gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Amen. That's my job. If I'm not allowed to do my job, then I might as well step down and say, listen, you carry on. Are you understand it? Are you understand it? If you are a train driver and they says you're not allowed to press the brakes, would you say I'm driving the train? Because, why? Because lives are at risk at your expense. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. How are you getting this? Amen. It goes on to say in verse 28. So Paul gives a warning. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over which man has made you a... Okay. Did it say man or Holy Ghost? So should I follow man or Holy Ghost? So it says, which the Holy Ghost have made you an overseer. Amen. Hallelujah. So he says, take heed to yourselves that you watch over the flock, which the Holy Ghost have made you overseer, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. So I have to be careful because Jesus has purchased this church with his own blood. So I've got to make sure that I teach the right thing and do the right thing to the best of my ability, according to the word of God. Not the word of man. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Then it goes on to say, For I know this, that after my departing, shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men, listen, from men among you, from your own selves, listen, also of your own selves, so men among you shall Arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. And then he said, I like it when he says, men among you will talk perverse things. Trying to drive away the rest of the disciples. That's what the Bible says. And therefore, Paul tells us, therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years, say three, three. completion. I cease not to warn every one night and day with tears. So now I'm going to go into a story that you may know. Are you liking this? Are you learning something? Are you being fed? Are you going to be obedient? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so in 1 Kings chapter 19... Verse 15 onwards. Remember the three institutions? The home and the family. The government. And also the church. Amen. Do you know, when we go back to the government, if somebody's causing trouble and killing people, if the government is not doing their job, that person is going to go out again and kill somebody else. 
And if the government don't do their job, that person is going to go out together and kill to become a serial killer. Do you understand? And what God laid on my heart is that if the three institutions are not doing their job, there's going to be chaos in the world. There has to be order. Order. There must be order. Amen. God is a God of order. In your home, in your church, in the government, God is a God of order. I pray, oh hallelujah, I pray that order prevails in this country. I pray that order prevails in every church. I pray that order prevails in every person's heart and mind. Order, order, order. Amen. Sometimes the speaker of the House of Parliament, when the people get a bit rowdy, order, order. Have you heard him? Dare any of them say, who, who you think you are? What will they do to him? They kick him out. But the church feels they can do what they want, when they want, how they want. That's not order. That's not order. Hallelujah. I'm just praying that as I'm preaching, that you're hearing and it's falling on good ground. Because it's good to shout. But we need it to fall on good ground. Because if I preach this and you remain the same, then the birds, who the Bible says, the devil, is that what the Bible says? The birds will come and take away the seed and then you will lose what you've got. <laughs> Don't let the devil steal your joy. Don't let the devil steal the seed of the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. This word has not come to choke you, but it's come to build you up. The Bible said prophecy is for exhortation, for edification, and for comfort. Now, everybody thinks, well, that's great, all three things. But what people don't realize that edification means sometimes you have to smash something down to build it up again. The edification is the part that people don't like. Because you have to tell them what's right and build them again. Everybody wants the comfort. Everybody wants the exhortation, which means to give encouragement. But nobody wants the edification. And the Bible said, God said, I give you the fivefold ministry. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastors, teachers. For what? For the perfecting of the saints. So we come into what? Unity. And for the edification of the body of Christ. So sometime, pastor have to mash down something in love, mash it down and say this is how it should be built up. Hallelujah. But you see if pastor don't mash it down and it's crooked, it's going to grow crooked. And there's too much crooked people in the Christendom. I'm not talking about living hope, I'm talking about Christendom. It's so we just talk about the home, we talked about the government, and we talked about the church. Those three things. Watch this now. Do you remember the time when Elijah was on Mount Carmel? And he called down fire from heaven. Glory to God. Glory to God. He says, if you, O oh God, be your God. Hallelujah. They called down fire. They fought. They cut themselves. They danced. Nothing happened. But then he called upon Yahweh. The creator of the heaven and the earth. And the Bible said that God answered by fire. He then, when he won the battle, the Bible said that he said, Brown me up the 450 prophets of Baal. And the Bible says Elijah slew every single one of them. But when that wicked witch because Jezebel, the Bible says, was a witch. So now when Jezebel heard, the Bible said that Jezebel said, 
I'm going to come after that prophet of Yahweh, Elijah, and I'm going to kill him. Exactly how he killed my prophets and priests. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, when Elijah heard, he's human, you know. Hallelujah. Because some people think that if you're anointed, you're not human. Hallelujah. And so, Elijah ran and fled. Hallelujah. And the Bible said, chapter 19 and verse 15. Now the Lord then said unto Elijah, Elijah, go return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Hazel to be king over Syria. Verse 16. Notice that's one. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. That's two. And number three. So Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Malahoah, shalt thou anoint to be the prophet in thy room. It means in thy place, because Elijah had to go. Now listen to this when we come to about three. There's no escape for the enemy. So it goes on to say in verse 17, and it shall come to pass, God said, that him that escaped the sword, say sword, of Hazael, if you miss Hazael's sword, then it's going to be left to Jehu to slay. And even if you dodge, come on, let me, let me just do this. Let me do this. Come on, come on, come on. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Give me one more chair. Hallelujah. I want you to see it. Hallelujah. Here is Hazael's sword. I'm running from Hazael. I'm trying to get to Hazael. And he throws a sword at me. But I dodge it. Hey, 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 you can't catch me. Jehu. Jehu is here. Oh, my Lord. Hallelujah. What shall I do? He dodges Jehu. You can't catch me. And then, if he misses that sword, he's come up against the sword of Elisha. God told me two weeks ago, there is no escape. No matter where the enemy turn, there's going to be no escape. Hallelujah. No escape. So no need you for a fight. <laughs> no escape. You try this, you dodge it, you get this. You have to go back to here, you have to go back to here. You run it until in the end you don't bother turning up. Oh God, God, forget it. God, I can't cope with it. You see, the name... Hazael, in Hebrew, it comes from the root word Hazel. We got a Hazel in the house. I remember the first time she came here, she told me her name, and I said, that's a sign. Hazel means, or Hazael means, God sees. And then, Jehu means Yahweh is he. <laughs> so you come from God's seas, you dodge God's seas, you think you don't see. But God already set up the three institutions. He set it up. You can't get away from it. Amen. And so it comes to Jehu. Jehu means Yahweh is he. Yahweh is who he is, basically. And then it comes to finally Elisha. It means God has brought deliverance. Or God is my deliverer. Or God is my salvation. Amen. And so I'm here with a word from God from two weeks ago. That there is no escape for the enemy. Because the gates of hell shall not prevail. Verse 18. Yet I have left 7,000 men in Israel. So Elijah thought he was by himself. But no, he had other men in Israel. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Sometimes you think you're alone, brethren. But you don't realize that you're not alone. Somebody's praying for you. Somebody's praying for you. Somebody's there for you. And I've learned that. There is always, God always has a remnant. He always leaves a remnant. Hallelujah. So there are 7,000 which have not bowed unto Baal. And every mouth which have not kissed him. And so he departed. So Elijah departed and found Elisha first. The son of Shapa. Guess what he was doing? He was plowing 12. What does 12 mean? Divine government. Yoke of oxen before him. And he with the 12. And Elijah passed by him and cast his mantle upon him. It was his anointing. And he left his oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Let me, I pray, kiss my father and mother and I will follow thee. And he said unto him, Go again, for what have I done to thee? And he returned from him and took a yoke of oxen and slew them and bore their flesh with the instruments of the oxen and gave unto the people and they did eat. And listen to this now. Divine order. Then he arose and went after Elijah and ministered unto him. And I want to tell you, there are three institutions. Amen? The home, the government, the church. And in the Old Testament, God set up Haziel, Jehu, and Elisha. And if you think you can escape the government, you, the church is there. And if you think you can get away from the home, the government is there. No matter where you go, God has set it up for a reason. Because he wants us to keep in his word. The Bible tells us in 1 John 5 verse 7, there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Amen? And these three are one. Hallelujah. Isn't it good to know that if those three are one and the church is one with Christ, we are connected to the Father and we're connected to the Holy Ghost. Isn't that powerful? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brethren, I'm here to encourage you today. Let us understand that whatever the enemy is trying to do, there is no escape for the enemy. And we don't fight. Let me make this very clear because I don't want people to get this wrong. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. We're fighting against principalities and powers. Darkness in high, wicked places. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So when your brother or your sister offends you, just remember... It's a spirit behind them influencing them. So God has set up Haziel. He sees. Jehu. Yahweh is he. And also Elisha. God will deliver. And to close. Do you know who killed Jezebel in the end? It was under Jehu's leadership as king. So, he got past Chaziel, but God had already seen. She never even managed to get through to Elisha. Because Jehu was anointed. He was anointed. And he said one thing. He looked up at Jezebel and said, Who is on my side? Who is on the Lord's side? And the eunuchs of Jezebel, the very people who was working with Jezebel, threw it her over headlong. You hear it? So be careful who you're taking advice from. Be careful who you're talking to. Because the same people you're talking to and giving advice to, they will say, well, I'm going to turn on you. 